hello out there. I know it's only been roughly seven and a half years ago since the last time I made a YouTube video commenting on a game of mine. So I'm hoping I'm not rushing it with a new one already, but I played a fairly nice game I think a couple of months ago uh, in a tournament in Italy called Amanti Open 2014 or something like that. And it was in the last round against a Ukrainian called Andrei Strumets, who's rated 26 something. And he had actually been leading the tournament the entire way, I think. Um, and I was also trailing by half a point before this last round. And I'd actually had a horrible start uh, to the tournament, just scoring one and a half points out of the first three games. But then sort of recovered, scoring four and a half out of the next five. So. I was playing on bot 1 here and actually had the possibility to even win the tournament with a bit of luck. And I was playing white and had decided to go for e4. There was not a lot of time to prepare. You play at 9 o'clock in the morning, it's just uh, make a decision and then go with it. And my opponent actually plays uh, four, four different moves here, both c5, c6, e5 and e6. but. I sort of had the idea that against me he'd go for the French. And that's also what he did. So, okay, I went for this and he played knight of 6, the signage variation. And this has been seen a lot of times before, I've also played it a couple of times. I think the last, in the previous games I played a3 here, uh, as recommended by Khalifman in, uh, in an old book. But I'd gotten my hands on a new one by Nagy, where he recommends to take on c5 instead. And I think I'd maybe glanced at this for some 15 minutes or so, uh, in this variation. So I had a bit of an idea what to do here, but not more than that. Black takes back, and okay, now comes, um, comes a bit more surprising uh, reply, which is bishop d3. Uh, first, it might seem like it's simply losing a piece due to d4. But okay, uh, of course that's not the case when he recommends it in a book. And the trigger is the white just takes it. And if black takes back with the knight, you go bishop e4. Threatening the rook here on a8, and also the knight on d4, so uh, white will regain his material. And if you take with the bishop, something similar happens. Take, take, and bishop e4. And if black goes knight b6, then it's just important that you don't take on a8 immediately. Because enough the castles, black can go knight c6 and it's not that clear. Whereas if you just go castles here, white should be much better, maybe even winning. But okay, of course my opponent didn't do that. I think he knew the variation. Uh, it has also been played by uh, Kayakin at least three times, I believe. Although back in 2011, but still um, enough to make it well known. So he fairly quickly went for queen b6, and I went bishop f2, and he played b4, knight a4, this is more or less forced, exchanges, and then we got into this end game. Here I actually considered doing something which I practically never do, which is to offer a quick draw. I don't like that you have this possibility to just uh, end the game like that. But there had been some really loud techno music till one something in the night. And also I thought the money wise I could lose quite a bit more in this game than I could win. But on the other hand it's not that often that you get to play 2600 plus players, even with white here. And also I fairly like my position. It's not a lot, but I think it's uh, slightly nicer for white. So I thought, okay, let's make some new, some moves and see what happens. He went for bishop b7, and I decided to go a3 here. I think the correct move might be rook h to c1, and then go c3 or c4 afterwards, um, trying to open up the queen side under favorable circumstances. But okay, a3 is still a decent move. He went a5, and I went c3. Putting a bit more pressure on b4, although it's not really a threat to take it uh, at this point. So I think you could just go king e7 and have a, a fine position. But instead he took on c3 after a really long think. 
and I took back with, sorry, with the pawn. After which he looked um, fairly surprised. I don't know if he thought that I should take with the knight instead, but I don't like giving up these two squares uh, for the d7 knight. And meanwhile, I also get quite a weak pawn here on, on b2. So um, for me, this looks uh, suspicious. Of course, I could hope to go knight b5 and give a check on d6 and be really annoying uh, on the d6 square. But on the other hand, usually black would just go king e7 and f6 and undermine it, after which the knight on d6 might actually be more loose than, than an asset. So um, taking with a pawn seems more natural. And then I can follow up with putting a rook on b1, threatening the bishop on b7. And hopefully get a bit, a, a bit of initiative here. Also, um, it restricts black's knight here on c6 by taking a bit more control over d4. And sometimes I might be able to go c4 if, uh, if I think it's um, beneficial. On the other hand, this allows black to easily exchange the, the light squared bishops, which he uh, does immediately. And the light squared bishop is usually quite a problem for black in the Steinitz variation. There are lots of games where black simply loses because of this, uh, this horrible bishop. Uh, one that comes to mind is uh, Peter Lieko against uh, Mihail Gurevic many, many years ago. But you can try to Google it and see how uh, Lieko wins a really nice endgame uh, with a knight against this bishop, if I remember correctly. Uh, probably it was knight and bishop against knight and bishop, but still, uh, it was mostly due to a really horrible light squared bishop for black. Anyway, bishop a6 to exchange them. And. Then I put a rook on b1, um, trying to get in on the C, uh, sorry b7 square. And of course, this was my idea to follow up with rook b7, threatening, hoping, <laughs> at least to take here on d7, go knight c5, check, and then win the rook on a6. It's always nice to have just some small tricks. And of course, I expected my opponent to see it, but still, I have this little hope that, okay, maybe he'll fall into it. But okay, um, I expect that he'd go knight c to b8 to protect d7. And then after rook h to b1, rook c8, I couldn't really see how to proceed here. Um, I thought my pawn on b3 is actually weak now. My knight on a4 is slightly strange, and although I have some nice uh, rooks here on the b-file, I don't see what I'm actually doing. Um, but the computer says that I should just go knight d2 to take the c4 square. And then, even after rook a to c6, this is apparently really nice for white. But okay, I think it's uh, fair enough to, to miss that. This should, should be uh, that good. So I went for the safe continuation instead, which is uh, c4. After this, I definitely don't have a big advantage. But on the other hand, I definitely have an advantage. And it takes quite quite a few bad moves to uh, to turn it around. I think we're only playing for two results here, and that's a nice th uh, the nice uh, thing about this. So he takes, and I go rook c1, rook b8 to exchange uh, my active rook. Makes a lot of sense. And then I take on c4. And here it's fairly equal, but I have some uh, I have. A space advantage and a bit of initiative, better pieces all around. And for instance, if he goes for a knight b6 here, which I initially thought that he should, then I have a rook c7 check. And if he goes for a knight 8 to d6, rook c6 just completely ties him up. Um, and after king d8, I have this really nice move of rook b7. Not taking on f7 and uh, grabbing some pawns for giving up the knight on a4, but rook b7 here, and I think uh, this should still be nice for uh, for white. Maybe you saw that. I went for f6 instead, uh, trying to, bake, to break my pawn chain. Here I could consider taking, and okay, saying that the pawn here on uh, h7 might be weak. On the other hand, I was slightly annoyed that he'd get the square on d6 for both his king, or maybe even the rook as well. 
try to become a bit active. Um, and for instance, on knight d4, I thought, okay, e5 here is uh, is definitely not clear. So why not keep it simple and stick to the plan of just playing for two results? So I went king e3, and then after once again a pretty long thing, he went for rook c6. And that's a nice thing about a position like this. He has to be careful all the time to make sure that he's not going for for the wrong exchanges. Um, have a fairly dangerous plan of sometimes uh, invading with my king, maybe winning the a5 pawn and uh, probably the game. So, yeah, whereas his king here on e7 is uh, pretty stuck because of my pawn on e5. That's why it's nice to not take an f6, but keep it here. Okay, rook c6 is okay. Exchanges, knight d4. And once again, after a thing, I believe, then he went for knight a7. He could take on d4, but now this uh, threat of invading with the king becomes um, something that he, he really has to be careful about. Um, for instance, I could also follow up with something like knight c5, and he can't exchange it because my king is too active, that sort of thing. The, the position is probably holdable, but it's not fun to uh, have to make a decision like this. So instead he went for knight a7, and I think this is a fairly funny position. There's a lot of symmetry here, uh, also with how our pawns are, but I just have this uh, space advantage, which really makes a difference. And it's a bit fun that this knight and this knight are fighting for the same squares, and the same goes for for these two. Um, okay, uh, maybe that's just me. Anyway, I went for king e4 to protect my pawn on e5, which was, which was uh, threatened, and then he went for g5. And I expect this to be uh, quite good. Um, what concerned me slightly was that he might take an e5, but I thought, okay, I have distant uh, past pawn, and many variations. Um, whereas his pawns in the center should be uh, a lot more weak, but yeah. But once again, keep it simple and just g3. Um, keep my pawn chain. So. Then he took, and took. Um, maybe you could ask why not just something like f5. But that would just leave my pawn here on e5 protected, whereas his pawn on e6 is uh, is really weak. And now I have a free hand to move around with my king, for instance, king d3, king c4, knight d5, or knight c5, something like that. Uh, should be really good for white. So, of course, taking an e5 instead. King f7, king f4, king e7, just saying, okay, I'm just uh, staying where I am, and you can't really do anything. And so I spent quite a bit of time on this move and on the next ones. I decided, okay, let's uh, make a couple of repetitions. I think I had a bit less time than he did. Um, fairly typically me. To spend too much time. So I just wanted to make move 40. So I went h3 here. Just, okay, I'm widening threefold repetition just before it happens. And then we're going back and forth once again. It also gives your opponent this idea that, okay, maybe I'm satisfied with the draw now. Um, Maybe we're going to end the game here. After all, he's 2600, I'm 25. Maybe I can't really find anything in the possession. And he would be relieved, I think, to just uh, make a draw here uh, that easily. But of course, that was not my intention. So I went for h4, first h3, then h4, and we're making uh, several moves here. Uh, we're at move 38 now, approaching the 40. King f7, king f4, king e7. And now, on my move 40, I played knight b2. And then I gained the extra time. I don't know if it was uh, half an hour, 15 minutes. It was probably 30 minutes, yeah. But he didn't have too much time either. And here, at move 40, then he had to 
make a really tough decision. So I think this is this was a really nice way to do it. First, going back and forth, h3, then h4, just getting really close to move 40, and then on the move, so I don't have to, at least so I have plenty of time afterwards, I go for knight b2. So he has to make the decision before he gets extra time. And, uh, okay, uh, it was pretty obvious that he didn't like this. The most obvious reply, I guess, is knight c5. This was what I expected him to do. But then after knight c4, he would have to go a4. And then I can start going king g5. And after king f7, maybe give check here. Okay, it seems this is a holdable position for him. But it just doesn't look fun. Um, I'm becoming really active and knight on d6 can suddenly join the action on both sides. Pawn on e6 has to be protected. But okay, likely it holds. But instead he went for knight b8. So once again, it has to deal with some tough choices. What to do in that position without too much time, and then he makes some inaccuracies. Knight c4, threatening his pawn, knight c6, and here I should probably have played knight b3, which, uh, which seems to be uh, really good. Uh, a line like this was something I spent quite a bit of time on. Um, but then I decided to go king e4 instead just to protect my knight, and if he exchanges then I'm invading with my king. And here he had to go a4. I think this was his last chance to uh, hold hold it together. Um, the problem with a4 is, of course, that it's more or less impossible to protect it in, in a proper way. But on the other hand, so is the case for my pawn on e5 and a3 if I want to protect both of those and attack his pawn on a4. I'm not in time to do it all. Um, so a4 was okay, but he went h6 instead. That's because all the time he had to spend a lot of time considering this maneuver, king f4 to g5. So he thought, okay, maybe he's just slightly improving his position, making me have to go this way instead. But now I can go a4. Take the square on b5, and I'm threatening to go knight b3, win the pawn on a5, and suddenly is in... Well, not suddenly, but now he's really in some serious uh, trouble. He went king d7, oh, knight b3, and knight c8. Now if I take on a5 now, he's going to play... Uh, whoops, sorry. Takes, takes. He has knight um, b6, winning back the pawn on, on a4. So that was, of course, not my intention. Um, and if I go for king f4 instead, then... He sort of gets his uh, knight from a7 back into the game, and he is okay. So, knight c5 check, king e7. Now it's in the way for the knight on c8. And then king f4. King f7. Again, making room for his knight on e7. And also, even though we were only six moves away from uh, move 40, we had both spent quite a bit of time and him especially, so he was really approaching time trouble, as far as I recall. And now I went for knight d6 check. Um, it's quite quite a forcing move. Now we exchange a pair of knights, and the pawn structure has changed, and when you do something like this from a really nice position, you should be uh, fairly sure that what you're doing is correct. Um, but on the other hand, if you look at this position, it's uh, fairly obvious that my pawn on d6 is a really strong one. And my king is still pretty active on, a on f4. His pawn on a5 is uh, easier to attack for me than my pawn on a4. It takes uh, more moves for him to get to attack it, whereas I can do it with just one, like b7, for instance. And uh, an idea like 
what we see here in the game after king f6, knight e7 check, and he went king g7. Already, if he goes king f7, he has to consider what happens after knight e5. Takes, takes, and h5, only move, otherwise I'm just winning um, his pawn on e6. But h5, and here I had to calculate this variation, that at least if he went for this, or, and I went for knight e5 check, but king f4 is... Um, is good, um, but it's just winning. For instance, after king f6, I go d7. King e7, for instance, takes, takes, and due to my pawn being uh, being the distant passer, this should win for, uh, for white. So he went king g7 instead, knight e5, knight d8, Already it was uh, way too late to take it. King f7, and I go h5 and he's dead. So knight d8 instead. And then I went for h5. Could also go for knight c4 to grab a pawn. Um, maybe I should show that, for instance, after knight c6 or knight b7, same thing will occur. I just win this pawn and attack the knight. And I'm in time to get back with my knight and protect. Uh, my pawn on d7. So king f6 takes, check, and here. And okay, this is also winning, but I thought what I did in the game was was an easier way, to, uh, an easier way to do it. So h5, and he went for knight b7, d7, knight d8, and knight g4. Keeping an eye on the h6 pawn, trying to block his king to the defense of it, and meanwhile making room for my own king on e5, d6, e7 or c7, helping my pawn to promote. Um, and for instance after something, oops, sorry, uh, after something like knight c6, king e4, he has to move this and then I'm just getting into his position winning the pawn on a5 or going back to d6. So. So he more or less had to go for king f7, then I can take an h6, king e7, so okay, now I'm losing my d7 pawn, but fortunately my h pawn is also really fast. Now knight f7 would just be a transposition after h7 or a knight e5 check. So he went king e8, h7, knight f7, knight e5, he has to block it, but then king g5. And for instance, if he goes king f8 here, I have king f6 followed by king g7 and well, winning his knight even. So he went king e7 instead, but then knight g6 is just completely winning and here he resigned. Um, he would have to go for something like this, but this is a trivial win. I'm going to eat both of his pawns and queen my own, so um, yeah, there's no hope anymore. I think it was a fairly nice game, especially if um, go back to a position like this. Um, not a huge difference, except for activity. Pawn on e5, more active knights and that sort of thing. Winning a game like this is uh, something I really, uh, really don't do uh, often. Um, usually, uh, usually my games are decided by some attack or, uh, well, especially I guess some blunders early on. Um, happens quite a lot. But this more really dry technical way of playing, not that uh, there are not variations to calculate all the time, but definitely yeah. But, but still just gaining a small advantage here and there and then um, giving your opponent some tough choices and then in the end exploiting it uh, to a full point. That's really nice, and it also meant that I got to share the first place. I had a horrible um, tie break, so okay, it was only shared, and I finished third or something. Yeah. But quite a comeback, also, with five and a half out of the last six games after the horrible start where I just wanted to go home. Um, so it was an awesome way simply to end the tournament. and then you're definitely looking forward to playing next time. Well, I hope you enjoyed the game. 
maybe even learned a bit from it. And uh, we'll see if it takes uh, a bit less than seven and a half years till I try to do this next time. Till then, cheers.